Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends and colleagues, uh, now we move uh, from the world of uh, metal artifacts to the world of uh, glass and uh, uh, amber artifacts. Uh, this uh, uh, slide, <coughs> short uh, summary, short uh, introduction, you can see that amber and glass beads are typical of the 10th century, while in the 11th century rings uh, prevail. Fragments of vessels are rare in both uh, cases, and in the 10th century, rare glass inlays in Bohemia. Uh, silver jewelry are documented too, and in the 11th century, the first window panes occurred. Oh, which? Oh. Which uh, the shift? Which, which, which else? Probably? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we can say uh, that um, uh, during the 11th century, uh, the base of glass artifacts is substantially changed in two ways: quantitatively and qualitatively. Now let's start with amber and quantitative uh, facts. In the 10th century, we can prove uh, great concentration of amber beads in Bohemia, more than 580 uh, beads and pendants uh, were found in 80 sites, especially in cemeteries. In the 11th century, evidence of amber artifacts is almost absent. It's interesting, at the same time, amber beads uh, occurred in Silesia, uh, yeah. with uh, uh, spreading of inflammation. With this exception, the low frequency of occurrence in the region's library of, uh, with Bohemia uh, didn't change much. Uh, not only amber beads uh, from Baltic coast, but also glass beads from Near East and other Eastern regions were an important part of the fashion and material culture uh, in the 10th century in Bohemia. This territory uh, with, was ruled by Przemyslet Dukes with uh, contacts uh, with the Ottonian Empire in the west, uh, the Piast Poland in the north, and Arpad's Hungary in the southeast. The involvement of Bohemia in long distance trade and the presence of an important market in Prague uh, were described by Ibrahim Ibn Yakub in the 1960s. Concerning beads, well, well, uh, we can see the same tendency that we found in the case of amber. Hundreds of glass beads in the 10th century and uh, decrease in the 11th century. Why? What caused change in quantity uh, of glass and amber beads? We don't register some changes in metal jewelry uh, in this period. Likewise, uh, there are no changes in political orientation uh, in, of Bohemian rulers. This substantial decrease of uh, beads accounts uh, can be linked to a local transformation of burial rite, leading to an absence of necklaces in graves, unlike the metal jewelry that remains. Beads continue uh, to appear, but only as isolated uh, finds in the settlement layers or in graves. Uh, this change in burial customs were probably influenced by Christianization process after year 1000. Yeah, Magic will speak. Uh, about it uh, later. Uh, and uh, let's come to qualitative changes in type of glass artifacts. The beads in uh, the 11th century are not only rare, but usually different types than in the 10th century. And the most important uh, change uh, is spreading of rings in the 11th century. Also, the first glass rings are recorded in Europe before 1000. Uh, this map uh, shows uh, that the rings are found in many regions from Eastern Europe to Southern Scandinavia to the British Isles. However, the largest amount uh, is found in the West Slavic territory uh, in Poland, Bohemia, in the Eastern regions of today's Germany. It's a question of how the rings spread to Bohemia and further to Europe. The provenance of rings is unclear. Two hypotheses could be considered. First, the long distance exchange and import of artifacts from uh, Eastern, from Kievan Rus, where their production is uh, documented. And the second hypothesis is local glass uh, working and interregional exchange. 
uh, reflected high light glass working doesn't require a uh, high temperature and not well equipped workshops enabled local glass working in the Central Europe uh, too. Uh, it's possible that glass rings were coming to Bohemia from Silesia, from North or from Moravia, from South East. What does archaeometry say about glass artifacts of 10th, 11th century? Microanalysis uh, of early medieval glass has been used in uh, Bohemia from the late 1990s onwards. SEM, uh, EDC, and laser ablation analysis uh, allow us uh, to classify chemical types of glass beds uh, based on different uh, chemical composition. A comparative uh, analysis of archaeometric uh, data obtained until uh, 2014 showed that a soda lime uh, glass, natron and plant ash glass uh, were without doubt dominant in the collection of 19th century Bohemian finds. Other uh, chemical types are rare or much less frequent. On the contrary, the second chart uh, indicates a boom in lead glasses in the 11th, 12th century and decrease of soda glass. Let's look at it led glass artifacts in more detail. Analysis which continued after 2014 showed a somewhat more complicated situation. Uh, the research uh, confirmed that high lead glass started in Bohemia in the 10th century in the form in miniature beads and beads with dots and crossing wires. However, their provenance is not clear, but from an archaeological point of view, based on topography of findings, uh, we can suppose that beads with crossing trails and dots were, in, were spread to Bohemia from Carpathian Basin, from today Hungary and Slovakia, where they are found in greater numbers. It's necessary to mention reports of information or written sources. Uh, Nestor Chronicle, Ibrahim Ibn Yaqub and others, which inform us uh, on activities on the Danube routes, on contacts between Prague, Hungary, Pereslav, and the presence of Arab merchants in Carpathian Basin in the 60s of the 10th century. But back to archaeometry. On this chart, the beads uh, of the 10th century are represented by green points. Uh, blue points are findings of rings and beads uh, from 11th, 12th centuries in Bohemia. And the chart also shows that since uh, the 11th century, these artifacts not only made of highlight glass were present in Bohemia, but also those made of lead ash, lead potassium glass. 4% of, of potassium content is accepted as a limit uh, between them. Ashley, potassium glass uh, represents an important innovation of glass making technology, something new on uh, the chemical map uh, of prehistoric and uh, historical glass. Problem of provenance. If we mention uh, lead glass, we have to speak of uh, metals too. Since as early as the 1990s, the link between lead glass and ore deposits <coughs> were revealed through isotopy analysis. Or deposites stimulated the formation of industrial zones uh, with both metal processing and in some cases glass making from metal waste residues or even slag. In this way, the importance of lead ore deposits in the Mel region was recognized for making special type of lead glass for smoothers and vessels. But no smoother made of this type of glass was found in Bohemia and in Central Europe. Unlike, for example, uh, of Hedeby. Uh, Highlight glass is much more likely to have originated in the Near East, as Peter Stepun thought, or in the North Caucasus, according to Maria Dikovna. Uh, these hypotheses uh, are supported by isotope analysis of highlight uh, glass beads in Moroccan finds of the 9th, 10th century, and Sercha de Mani Shibrek from the early 11th century. Uh, glass found in the shipwreck show links to Anguran in Iran, uh, southwest of Caspian Sea and south of Caucasus. From these uh, were uh, transported to Eastern Europe, uh, to Baltic Zone, to Viking uh, Scandinavia via the Volga River route, one of the traditional long distance trade route. Research results indicate uh, uh, that lead uh, beads uh, of the 10th uh, century were imported to Central and North Europe through long distance trade. 
We can consider that local glass working from imported glass spread to Eastern and possible also Central Europe uh, during the 11th century. Uh, what we can say about lead potassium glass? It's something uh, different. The results uh, Oscar making is of uh, particular importance for it. Uh, he collected and analyzed 230 uh, uh, available uh, samples and according uh, to the content of potassium, calcium and lead, he divided the collection into three groups. First, Central European lead edge glass with high content of lead. Uh, second, Slavic lead glass with similar ash content as uh, European lead edge glass but low amount of lead. And uh, this glass was produced according to making in the Eastern Europe. And third, wood ash lead glass made in Western Germany. This glass is only typical of the 12th, 13th uh, century and so it's not directly related to our uh, topic. The validity of this model requires to be uh, tested and verified. Katerina Stoyarova from Moscow uh, shows that in the case of finds from Russia, the making use doesn't apply in all cases. It's also important to refine the chronology in relation to difference in uh, chemical composition. But let's go back to Bohemia, where lead potassium glass of the 11th century belongs to a type uh, classified by Oscar Making as Central European lead ash glass. And this is the reason for the conclusion, hypothesis, that rings and beads uh, from this glass were products of local Central European glass working and not imports uh, from uh, Kievan Rus. Uh, comparing glass uh, beads and rings in Bohemia and other territories between 10th and 11th centuries, we may notice some similarity, similarities. Uh, for example, on the Baltic coast, the transfer of settlement from declining 10th century uh, site of Haidabu to developing Schleswig in the 11th century was accompanied by similar changes in the range of and quantity of glass artifacts as in Bohemia. Uh, Svetlana Varulina describes similar changes in the quantity types of glass ornaments and in the chemical composition of artifacts in Bulgar, in the territory of Volga Bulgarians between uh, 10th and 11th centuries. <laughs> uh, she assumes that changes in glass jewelry in Eastern Europe are related to the changes in the silver economy. It should, should be emphasized that the changes of glass ornaments, uh, cultural changes are closely linked uh, to the social and economic life. They probably reflect changes in raw materials in the case of let edge glass technological innovation, local glass working shifts. In any case, we are facing the evidence of global changes and conclusions. Quantitative changes of glass and amber artifacts in Bohemia around the year 1000 reflect a local change in the burial rite, probably influenced by the Christianization. Uh, second, however, similar processes, similar changes are registered in some other European territories, probably due to other reasons. And third, shift in the proportion of artifacts made of glass of different chemical composition and different provenance after the year 1000 can be considered as reflection of global technological and economic changes. Thank you for your attention.